Hi everyone, welcome to Haven House Art and to my studio here on the cliffs in the far north of Scotland, pretty much near John O'Groats. Um, what I want to do today is teach you guys how to paint a wave, um, a seascape from scratch in acrylics um, and it's for, this is a class for beginners or for those with a little bit of experience or those that just want to try and tackle a seascape. So the four, there's literally four colours that you're using today and it's the four colours that you will probably find in a acrylics starter pack. So it's very basic colours. Uh, ultramarine is the dark blue. Um, burnt umber, I believe, or is it, no, it's raw umber is the dark brown. Cadmium yellow and um, titanium white. Um, but any of those versions of blue, brown, yellow or white should work. Um, so how to paint a seascape, uh, lots of people love, want to tackle the water and the movement, so I'm just going to give you a basic insight how to create a seascape painting today. So you will need your canvas, you'll need your water for mixing your, for washing your brushes, you'll need an assortment of brushes including um, including wash brushes so something big but then you need medium size and then you need small brushes you will need probably something quite bristly if you haven't got something like this and you can use a toothbrush because we're going to be flicking paint uh, you will need your colors like I've just shown you in a palette but you also need a mixing palette if you have a tub like that you can use uh, the lid for mixing uh, I've got a bigger um, palette here and the canvas you can use, you can use square, you can use rectangular. So this whole painting lesson for you today is for you to enjoy, take some time out um, and we're going to be painting my favourite subject to paint which is the sea. And uh, why do I love the sea? Just because I do, I have salt in my <laughs> blood. Uh, I was born in the south coast of England and now I live in Scotland and it's just an amazing amazing thing to paint and to be around is the sea. We'll get more into that I'm sure as the session progresses. So how to start? Let's take our biggest brush that we have. Uh, I'm going to use this one. You need to wet that brush, dip it into your water. Then dip that into your dark blue colour and we're going to put that onto your mixing uh, palette. So I'm going straight onto this big one here, putting that on. Then I'm going to go and take the other corner of this brush into the white. Make sure it's wet again. Take up a big scoop of white and mix that together with that blue. Now let's just see. What I'm trying to do when we put our first washes onto the canvas is take the mid-tones of the colour and then we can go light and dark either side. I'm just going to put a touch of yellow from there into that mix because I want it just slightly green, not too green. And let's just, I'm just checking it against my photograph, just check the colours. More water into that. So the consistency is something like egg yolk. You don't want it too watery where it's all like running down the canvas, but you want it wet enough so you can apply a wash. So put that onto your mixing palette, wash it, put the water on, and let's go for that, I think. Let's go for that. So from the top till about a third of the way down, wash that colour on. And if it's not mixed completely on your uh, uh, mixing palette, don't worry, because you can have different colours of blue and yellow coming through and a bit of white too. We want to cover this canvas to begin with. And then every time I'm going back to this mix, I'm just putting some more colour 
and some more water onto my brush just to get it down to where we need to cover this. Oh, lots to see, I've got lots of streaks of blue and yellow coming through, that's absolutely fine. While it's still wet, you can then work your way through it and blend it onto the canvas. So bring it to about a third of the way from the top to a third of the way down. Okay, see it's actually not this colour today. I've got a nice <laughs> grey on the sea outside the window, but it's okay. We do have days like this. We have the deep days of the blues and the greens and the vibrance, and then we have days of grey. Okay, so that's your first level of wash for the top section. Just checking that we've brought it down far enough. And I'm now, when I'm looking at the canvas, like I'm just seeing where the wave's going to break, so I'm making sure I've got everything I need. Okay, so let's go. Whilst we've got that bluish colour, we're going to go from the bottom and we're going to work our way upwards, and then the wave's going to be breaking in the middle. So, same brush, I'm going to dip it into the water, and then I'm going to go back into the blue in my mixing palette. And now I want it slightly darker than that background. So I'm just putting more blue into that mix. Then I'm going to put a touch of the dark brown just to tone it down. But I've still got some of the white that was sat there already. Just a touch of white just to lighten it. We don't want it too dark, but we can go even darker when we're putting all the detail. Make sure you mix enough. It's going to bring you from the bottom nearly to the point that we've got. So it's going to come again to just over a third, okay? Right, so that's, I'll show you the colour that's on my mix. And that's me in the same section I've just added and it's come up with this dusky brown colour. Um, I'm just going to put more water just to make sure I can get from the bottom up and it's just using horizontal strokes let's wash that on from the bottom up and again it's picked up a little bit of green that are on and haven't mixed properly that's absolutely fine okay nice wash color Now it's quite warm in here today, so the warmer that your room is, the quicker this paint's going to dry. Um, acrylics takes about five minutes to dry, depending on how warm the room is. If you want to speed up the drying process, you can blast your canvas with a hairdryer. Don't think I will need it today. I've got the heater on, drying everything right. That's in my fingerprints on that top bed, that's fine. Okay. So I haven't mixed enough, I'm just gonna go back, more blue. You you guys probably need to do the same, more brown. Then a little touch of white. And then water. Mix it all together, you'll get a dusky blue. Okay, more water just to wash that one. box doesn't want to stay shut. So when I'm doing demonstrations, I, I lean this on a box and I normally don't paint like this. Believe me, I can paint without a box. <laughs> okay. So that's your wash for the top and the bottom. What we will do now is go down to a smaller brush 
um, but I'm still using a wash brush. So I'm going to use this one now. And um, we're going to go back into that color mix that's on the mixing palette. And I'm going to add, we want the wave to actually be slightly greener than the rest. So add a touch of yellow. And then it goes like a slimy green. Now we want it to go back to blue. So add more blue. Now it's gone a bottle green. More yellow. Just testing the color. And more white. Okay. More blue. Here we go. I'm up here. There you go. So you need it like a bottle green but we want it to be lovely and transparent we don't want it to be like that horrible yellow slimy color I think this is it now just checking against the picture okay I think that should do us so let's wash that I'm going to put more water on the brush just check how dry this top section is we should be good to go over the top now without picking up the paint um that was sat under it okay so wavy shape going for that and then coloring it in transparent and keep so your paint needs to be lovely and quite light watered down and it's putting the top of that shape however your shape turns out today okay you can be quite dramatic or you can have it quite subtle and then bring in that paint downwards and you can be quite rough with the um, brushwork um, because we're thinking about all that lovely texture that's in a wave and the movement actually at this point we can even now think about movement um, which is the joy of painting a seascape is you're trying to catch you're trying to catch the energy um, and the light and the color but mostly it's the energy so when you're painting a seascape it's always good to let go and have fun um, and not be too constrained in your seascapes or in your brushwork okay so what I'm doing is just bringing it downwards which is very uh, sketchy into the blue um, very yeah like just very energetically uh, there's no uniformity especially when you're painting water. Um, we let go, we have fun, we let the brush do the work. You can see what I'm doing. And um, the reason I'm, I'm giving you the lesson today in acrylics uh, I paint in oils and acrylics uh, it's just literally for the drying time uh, oils are great to have fun with uh, but you need days in between layers well the way I paint anyway you need days in between layers to uh, let them dry and then come over the top with your uh, next layers and it just means it's like the you end up with something that's transparent you end up with all the preceding um, coats of paint showing through which is lovely and a great way to paint water okay so that's now there coming down lovely right we're going to go back to the top and put in a darker color at the top I'm washing that brush completely now in the water and then uh, I forgot to say at the beginning you need some rags or some kitchen towel to then dry off your brush and we'll probably go to a different section of the mixing palette so I'm just going to dry off that brush
Okay. So let's go for, I'm going to just dip it in the water, in the water. Um, take up some of the dark brown, just a little, little. that's how much is on my brush. Uh, and then back into water and then I'm going to take some blue. Um, so we're going back into a dusky brown, uh, dusky blue. Now I'm just going to add a touch of white because what we want to do is make this background recede and we're going to have all the darker colours at the front here. So here I am now, this is the second colour that I'm mixing, the dark blue, dark brown and I'm just going to, using the same brush, water down the paint and I'm just going to do a lovely wash over what we've just done very thinly using the brush sideways and start adding in some ripples at the top here. So that means that you'll leave gaps of what you've done showing through. And we're starting to add all that lovely different colours over the top. Bring some of that through very gently. Through, through. Okay. And then over here too. So it's the side of the brush that I'm using. Depending how big your canvas is, you can use the other side if you need to cover more canvas. we can do the same with that at the front as well so let's take the same color just added more water um, and then we're going to come under let's see yeah under the wave here create a little bit of shadow start plotting in our darker sections And if you need to mix, I'm just going to add uh, mix more colour. Okay. So just laying that colour over the top, thinking about movement of water as we're applying the paint. And now down here is where the wave is crashing, so I'm just having more texture down here and more movement. Underneath here, bring it over here. Okay. And then just carrying on that right through to the bottom of the canvas. Do you see how sketchy it is, how free, there's no thinking, it's literally letting the water speak to you, the, the paint speak to you. And enjoying the peace and the serenity that creativity brings to you. Literally as soon as I pick up a paintbrush, my mind goes, ah, oh, and relax. Hopefully you, got, you guys are doing the same. And then we've also got the healing benefits of the sea as well, that we're contemplating all these lovely sea colours. Um, so blue is relaxing, it's a relaxing, calming colour. Uh, and it also helps the body fight inflammation. And then you've got green, which is neutral, which means it just balances everything. So when you're looking at the sea, you're absorbing all these different colors, 
which will affect your energy, affect your mood. So if you can't get to the sea, then you can paint the sea. And it will do wonders for your well-being. I hope you guys are okay. And I'm always thinking about you, thinking of ways that I can help you. And the one way I can help you is to teach you how to paint. Okay, so um, that's us with our base colours down, I th think. Right, what we will do now, you, need to, you won't need those wash brushes anymore. So we're going to go uh, down a size and brush. Um, so I'm just wondering which brush to use. And how to show you quickly as well. Um, right going for this one which is a medium round brush uh, it says a nine on it something like that anything that size but make sure it's round or you could um you could use the rectangular ones but i think we'll stick for round for now we might use these ones a bit later if you've got that and you've got nothing else fine <laughs> uh right wash your brush and then take it into the white here we go so we've got that on my brush and then over here is just where we were in that um, dark blue section so I've just taken the white into a corner of that so that we've got some of the dark blue running through it and I'll show you what we're going to do with it just mix up so you've got some white with a little bit so it ends up like with a, a light grey and then a little bit more water okay here we go so we're going to end up, what we're doing is creating the froth and the foam that's actually behind the wave. It actually um, will make the wave stand out even more. And again now, as I'm applying paint, I'm thinking about all that lovely movement of water behind the wave, frothing up. Um, so just be very free, very sketchy with your um, paintbrush. And what you want to try and do is um touch the top of the wave but don't come over it but it doesn't matter because i'm sure we're going to add more colors to that green but just in case we don't just try and be quite tidy over the top of it and what you want is some gaps so you've got some of that lovely light blue still showing through i'm not going all the way to the top so it's just literally like um the same kind of width of the wave but behind it okay color in with your brush a lot of lovely energetic brushwork if you need to just add more water absolutely fine it's all about the transparency and again just try and a little bits of peaks and troughs in that uh, frothy section so bits that go up bits that go down okay lovely and then what we can do with that same colour is um, we are going to bring it down into the bottom of the wave but I'm actually now taking a little bit more blue from that mixing palette and a little bit of the more darker blue because it's actually a little bit more blue down here at the bottom I guess because the lights not hitting it um, same kind of technique so just a little bit frothy over here where it's landing where all that it's like bouncing back up Okay, and what we're doing is just putting in again the, the basic colour that we'll go back over the top with our detail afterwards. Got some lovely blues happening down here. Okay, I'm going back and I'm picking up more paint, more water. Over here. Okay, so 
maybe not what you expect, maybe not how you've painted before, you know, like it's very much people are like, oh, that's how I paint it up and down, round, and it's not. Like for you to get movement in water, you need to break out of that and think energy movement. All right, and don't be scared of it. Don't be scared of the paint. Okay, so uh, now some of this is actually coming downwards. So now my, I'm going back to the white, but I've also picked up some of the green as well to bring through, but make sure this color is lighter than the green we've already used. Here we go, so I'm over here, this is the green, now I'm over here with some white. Same brush, no washing brushes, sorry about it. Right, what I'm doing is thinking about direction of this wave as it's crashing, it's coming down this way. So we're gonna bring the paintbrush this way too. So much energy in this wave, it's lovely. Okay, I'm going over the top of what we've done bring in the transparent paint this way and it's all coming together down just going to pick up more paint and some more water okay good Bring that right through to the end. Alright, let's see. I think I've got a little gap over in this side where it's actually nice because it's not doing that, it's doing something different. But we'll just bring some more down here. Um, now what's over here, yeah, just a little bit of kind of texture, but not in what we were just doing. So I'm just sketching that over the top, just adding some more transparency over here. Okay, that will all dry, we'll go back over. What we can do now is, um, yeah, what we need to do is go, I'm going to go slightly smaller on my brush again. I'm now down to this one and it's a six. And um, I'm going to go back into my blue section here that we mixed. I'm going to put white into it again. So you end up with a light blue. Just make sure. Right. And we need it to be lighter than what we've used so far in the blue section. Okay, water on my brush. I'm going to start putting in some light shades um, through this bottom section. I'm using the very point, the very tip of the brush, very delicately, putting in the, uh, what are they called? Ripples of the sea as it comes down. And again, this is all for you. This is your um, painting. Don't look at mine, just get lost in the process, enjoy the process see where your paint ends up today. Hopefully not all on your face. Um, just enjoy it. Okay, so as I've picked up some paints and blues got onto my paintbrush. Absolutely fine. We've got some blue bits coming through. So it's going around the dark that we've done so far. Yep, that's coming out fine working with what's already on your canvas. So very tip of that paintbrush. Let's see where it wants to go up here. Okay. And then I'm going back to that uh, palette and picking up more paint, more water. Very delicate. Putting that through. And then over here. Okay, breaking up that dark section over there. 
work with the colours, work with the tones that you've got on your canvas if you've got dark sections then go either way around it, over the top or the bottom. You'll find that you've already created some lovely shapes already. Bring that right down to the bottom. Okay. Um, and what's going on here in the middle is just make sure you know what's going on so underneath the way we're going to put more shadow under it so we can work our way through that anyway what's going on here and then we're creating movement here lovely um let's see now we probably need to do something very similar at the top but not so pronounced um let's see we've got that gray light blue let's just see if that will show up okay so i'm going to take white and blue together not so much of the brown that will work i think right here we go i've just got a light blue so blue and white same brush bit of water we're just going to create some sort of that's too white right if it's gone too white add more blue I don't want it competing with what's going on down here. We want a painting that's got depth. So I've actually added quite a bit of blue. Let's see if that works now. Should work. As long as you keep it lovely and muted with that blue. Um, and you don't want it so defined at the back because this is our background. You just want sort of hints of what's going on. Not so defined as it is at the front. I'm just going to go behind our little wave that we've created, our little bits of foam, and run this through. It's just adding more tones of that blue through what we've done. Okay. So it's like a mid blue colour that we are working with here. Great. And just over here, there's not so much detail in this background section, so don't spend so long on it. Okay. Just to give the indication of what's going on. Nice. Right, what should we do now? We need to, I think we need to go back and define some of our green. We need to bring some shadow downwards. Um what brush will we use now let's see we'll stick to this brush i'm going to wash it though because we need to go to go into some different tones of green yeah so i'm going back to the green section on my mixing palette let's go for some yellow through there and let's see how yellow it wants to go i'm adding water Just see if it makes any difference. Yeah, it does. I think we need to add just a little bit of yellow over the top in what we've done, just to create some interest. And add a tiny bit of white. Let's see if we can light it up a little so we can actually see what we're doing. That's it. And then blend it into what we've just done. So I'm kind of not covering the whole wave, just some of the wave in this lovely green yellow color. Okay, that will lighten it up. Still got transparency because you've still got all the other colours showing through. And then let's just put a little down here. We want it uniform, but we're going to have lots of um, frothy stuff happening over here. Okay. Just a little over here to bring it all together. Um, and let's just then go darker so we're gonna to that mix now take your dark blue and your dark brown and you should then mix it into that green and we go darker and just define the top of the wave here yeah so you can 
um, define that edge for sure and then bring some of that lovely dark down where again just leave some of what you've done bare lovely so that white will um, stand out the white that's behind it is going to stand out even more because we're going to go back and work through that section just run your brush along okay and whilst we've got that color then we need to bring it downwards to meet the shadow section that we've created over here which again we can go even darker so just bring the dark through so it meets that lovely dark blue okay okay that's working um, just create some movement with that dark by bringing the ripples down by bringing the brush down into the ripples over the paint that we've just painted okay and over carry on right through to the other side so lovely dark green happening under here okay and then it's gonna let's just bring some sort of movement up here so we just break up the straightness of this wave okay and let's just then finish off the top of the wave over that other side same brush just mixing my brown and my darks and my dark brown and my dark blue into that green because I want some of that lovely dark green to be coming downwards and again the top of the wave is very jaggedy nothing straight bringing some of it downwards into what we've just done so the top section of that is quite dark but you then bring the paint downwards blend 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 and again we can bring some down into the way wave bring it down gosh it's warm I'm just gonna turn my heater up the sun's come out and bring this down So what you can do with these classes is um, you guys can pause and take as long as you need on any section, all right? So what I'm doing is just giving you a straightforward, very simple, um, all the way, one take class. Um, but know that when I create waves, paintings, um, they take hours, they take days, take weeks. Um, but I'm just giving you very basics of how to create a wave. You can put as much time and um, hours and effort into your wave and detail. And I'll leave you, when I leave you, with um, tips and techniques of how to refine your wave, okay? Um, but this is just a very simple exercise for you to get you used to using paint, of you getting you used to um, painting seascapes. So that's us with that bit for now. I think we need to go back to the frothy section. I'm going to go down in my brush size again. So what we do is we start with our big brushes when we get smaller. Um, I'm now on this one. Maybe a three, I think it's, it's been worn out so I can't really tell. Um, what I'm going is going straight into the palette with the colours and going into the white and I've just picked up some water on my brush 
and we're now just gonna go and play with the froth so here we go some lovely shapes are coming through that energy of that froth breaking up at the back over the top of what we've done so let's go in and around have fun with it all about the movement and then yeah just bring it all the way that is coming all the way along see where those uh, that foam wants to break. See, it's coming together now, huh? Bet you didn't think it would. So it's been very, very quick. Um, but yeah, like you said, you guys can take as long as you need to. Maybe quick is good. Maybe quick is good more impressionistic um, and then let's finish it off your dots and your dash is going to be completely different to mine and that's good for your expression And you can bring it right down to the wave as well. I'm just being mindful that um, I don't want to come over the top, but if I was being slower, I would bring it downwards. And then let's do something very similar in the front. Let's just see if we need to go just a touch bluer. So I've, yeah, I've just added a tiny bit of light, light blue that was sat on the mixing palette. Let's think about here. So when this is all breaking, well, I want to go bluer than that. So I've just gone even bluer. There we go. Um, because for some reason the light's hitting behind. It's hitting the wave and the frost behind, but not so much here. It's picking up little bits of the white, which we'll highlight afterwards. But I want some of this lovely blue to come through here. Okay, so same uh, technique, just thinking, not thinking, just go with the process. It's just letting that brush do the work, splashing that water upwards. Bringing that colour up. blue just a little bit more blue there yeah so as I'm, I'm working there's kind of bits of blue that are coming through and then some of it is a bit whiter but that's fine we can go back and strategically put in some white now here there's lots of little bits of blue like uh, kind of like, I don't know what it's like, it looks like little veins in the waves, right? So using the point of the brush to just draw those in very delicately. And over here to just breaking up that section really. Okay. Going over the top. Okay, um, right, we're back over here now. We just need to finish off the frothy section over here. So here we go, let that do that. See how that 
want to wear. There's so much happening here, lots of lovely broth happening there. Bringing that down over all this section here, but you want to make sure you can see some lovely dark bits coming through. Playing with our brush on either side, all sides, letting it roll in my fingers. Bring it down into that shadow section. What you want to do is cover up any of the line, um, of the green line hitting that shadow section with this froth now. Okay, and then over here, just need to add more blue. Let all that speak. And then again, just following the shape of that wave, the direction of that flow, using that brush um, direction, bringing it down with it. I'm using the side of the brush now, just bringing that down so it's like transparent washing over that. To the bottom of the wave, not the top, into that froth. Even now, watering down my brush as well. Great. Uh, very free, very easy, have fun. Right, now we need to add some of that lovely light blue, blue through the front. Same brush. Uh, let's see what's going on. So we've got some lovely blue bits here. Running through. I'm copying what we have up here, it's kind of reflecting down here. You want some of that blue to be coming through this bottom section, but don't worry too much. It's just, just to create uniformity. If you're happy with what you've done already down here, then don't worry about it. So I'm just bringing some blue down here. and then down here, not too much. We don't want to saturate all this with blue now. Okay. Right, let's think. So actually this wave still needs a little bit of shadow in some of the sections. So I'm going back to my dark bottle green color if you have it still on your palette. Um, if not, you can mix it. Dark bottle green would be blue, yellow, and a little bit of brown and maybe some white if you need to just raise it slightly. Again I'm following the direction of the wave as it's crashing using the brush. Lots of water to create the transparency. Bringing that downwards into the crashing section at the front. And then here, okay. Just here. Right, it's working. Now over here. Right. Okay. 
so what we need to do is add some of our shadow make sure we've definitely got shadow on happening so dark brown dark blue same brush a little bit of water dark brown dark blue and let's just get our shadow working follow what you've done already all the little light and just using the point of the brush to create our shadow under here and you know it you're not really um painting as such you f i feel like when i'm doing stuff like this it's more drawing with the brush you know painting would be like coloring in sections this is just using the color to draw so it's like fine lines using what i've got already and now i'm going to go and bring out some detail of these ripples with this dark as well um not every ripple just maybe some of these sections that are bring out some dark sections some dark detail yeah uh let's see over here is the same let's see what's happening here just creating some drama some definite line work here great um where else i think i want some here uh, let's see what's going on under here so yeah create some definite lines shapes with that dark very dark this is the darkest we're going to go we don't use black i tried not to use black um and i use it i use the different shades that i can get with the dark brown and the dark blue the only time i use black is maybe on the um, top sections of a painting if it just needs it in the detail So yeah, just choose where you want to put these dark sections in your ripples. You can put it under the light section as if it's like a, a little bit of shadow or a little bit of water that's rolling. And again, I'm just doing a very basic minimum, um, but you guys, you spend as much time as you want to on that Oops. bring it down here okay so let's just see what's going on now what's happening uh i'm just wondering if we need yeah we need more transparency in that wave and then i think we can finish maybe not let's just um i'm gonna go back just quickly to the foam section behind the wave and just just make sure we've got different colors coming through here just to break it up so i've gone back to the light blue yeah just creating definition behind so it's not just white so kind of blending a little of that dark blue through. Making it more interesting, um, but not too much. Again, it's very transparent, the, the paint. It's like a watercolor at this stage. Keep it very fluid. Just create that whole foamy effect. We're gonna, then our last color that we're gonna use is white. So we'll go back and just add some detail through there. What I want to do is just add some transparency through um, our wave. So I'm actually gonna go for that, um, a rectangular, but any brush that's kind of medium sized, going to that light blue color that we've just been using very fluid keep it very fluid what we're going to do now is um, 
bring this lovely water over. That's it. And it's all bringing it together now. So it's coming over what we've done, but it, like because it's so fluid, so transparent, that you'll see all of that lovely stuff happening underneath it. Again, following the direction of uh, that wave as it's crashing. And then over here, let's create some transparency over here. Uh, oh, oh no, look, mistakes happen. So before it even dries, white. And then we will use and incorporate that into the painting. No mistakes, no mistakes at all. Uh, so carry on, on, what was I doing? So what had happened is I just picked up too much white and not enough water and then too much paint. Absolutely fine, don't worry about it. Transparency, transparency, okay? So just bringing all of that down, keep it so fluid that we don't pick up too much paint. Okay. Lovely. Uh, what would I do now? So again, we just need to break up this um, little uh, what's going on. So we just need to add some darker bits of blue through here because we're going to go back and add the white. So just bring it right down. This is me. It's a very, it's a mid blue actually. It's not light blue. It's like the mid blue that I've had sat on that mixing, just creating more definition through this bit here. Fingers, you can add fingers, you can blend with fingers. How is it looking? Good, hopefully. Right, it will all come together in one second when we start adding the white. And we are gonna, I think we're gonna flick some paint, we will, I think. We need some spray happening. All right. So, yep, you spend as much time as you need to refining all of that. Uh, you can play around with all of this lovely water. You can bring some more. That's me just getting blue and bringing that down again. So you can go even more transparent in this section, even more blue in that section. Blending that in through here. Um, and let's just bring some here. Okay. So, right, what you need to now do is pick up the smallest uh, brush that you have. I'm on a zero. Um, now we're going to go straight into the white. We actually know we're going to flick the paint first and then we're going to finish with that detail. So what you need to flick paint is a, brus a bristly brush. So this one's really stiff. You need a toothbrush, something like that. Um, you will get messy. Uh, it will fly everywhere. <laughs> but uh, have fun. So uh, brush in the water, straight into the white. It will you need to water it down to flick it uh, so you'll probably just have to test and see how much water you will need and um, go for it so it's on my brush now I'm aiming for the top of the frothy section flick 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 using my thumb gosh where's it going probably all over my clothes um, flick 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 Create all that lovely texture. I'm gonna add more paint and more water. Great. Now, as much as you want, as little as you want. Uh, 
and it's also coming through the front section of this um, froth here too, as well. What I would do if I was painting um, a proper painting commission or um, one of my large seascapes, I would cover up the section that I don't want um, the paint to be on with a tea towel. I'd probably put it on the floor and then um, cover up the section with rags, tea towels, whatever so that I don't get, I don't want the splashing to come through in this front section or even maybe at the back so it's just to contain it within where the wave is breaking would be lovely. So let's just see where else we can put it. Okay, nice. Yep, and again, just as long as you want to spend on this. Um, and it's just adding to the drama, to the energy and the movement. And that back section probably needs more. Now, if it's come, it's come to the front, just get it off before it dries or if it, you can then incorporate it right uh, i'm just gonna go for one more flick and then we will um we will finish off so let's just get that paintbrush I like all that movement happening at the back oh flying over the top <laughs> uh, right, paintbrush, a white, a um, little bit of water. Now let's see what we need to do. So perhaps bring out some more detail. Lots of just free and easy, so free and easy. Get lost in that journey with that paintbrush. Where do you want to put your highlights now? Where do you want to bring the viewers' attention? Um, let's see, so it's coming. I've got a lovely fluffy section here. Whenever, wherever you want to put your highlights, I'm putting mine down here. It's bringing them through into this section. So letting the brush work, it's actually coming over here a little, bringing it through here. happening and I like that happening there I'm trying to break up some of this um, this wave as well so we've actually got the front of the wave um, kind of reflecting what's going on at the back oh gosh you could spend ages honestly you could just have so much fun with all this texture and lovely stuff Um, right, so carry on, do as, spend as much as you want to. What I'm just going to do is, um, again, in these ripples, we're going to just pull out some detail along the front. Maybe all of it is where you want to put your highlights, some of it. So using the um, pointed section of the brush very tip of the brush to draw in your highlights wherever you need them to be um i don't know yeah hmm. 
okay what I'm gonna do is just create some more drama up here I like it to go up slightly so it's not so uniform there we go and then what else yep I think what I would do if I will I probably will turn the camera off and then carry on with all my texture through all of these sections just literally doing what I'm doing adding more um, you can then go back to your ripples create more definition in your ripples create more movement in that way with more splashes um, so I <laughs> would love to see um, your waves uh, I really would love to see them and all your different expressions and how you create them um, so if you feel brave enough you can add, upload them to my Haven House Arties uh, Facebook group um, so upload them I'd love to see them um, and you can then if you're interested in taking part in more um, you can um, download some recorded art classes uh, that I've got on my Haven House Art website or you can sign up to my newsletter to be uh, notified when there are more art classes available. You can also take part in a live painting class um, online that I do where we all come together and we paint the same image and I guide you and talk you through the process. Um, and I also paint in my married name of Lisa McDonald as well. So that's where I do big waves and oil paintings and full of energy. Um, so check out all of that i hope you've had fun uh more importantly i hope you've had some mindfulness time an hour of just switching off and getting into the creative flow and i hope and i hope and i hope that you've tuned into the essence of the sea and all the healing that it brings take care it was lovely to spend time with you all see you soon